Hello girls, guys and non-binary pals, I'm Salmon and this is my channel Jolly Salmon. I'm a cosplayer from Poland and I make videos about cosplay and other stuff including but not limited to sustainable living. I have a vague idea of what I want to talk about today so we're gonna talk about conventions because I'm getting my vaccine today and I hope that in the last months of 2021 we can finally have a convention. And many of you are beginner cosplayers who have never been to one. Because cosplay has become pretty mainstream on TikTok and all over the internet, because we basically transitioned to the internet realm in order to do our hobby because there weren't any conventions, many of you have probably never been to a con and do not know what to take with you, how to behave and what do you even do at a con. Luckily, I am here with almost four years of experience and a never shutting mouth. So I'm going to tell you today what to pack to your first ever convention whenever they come back. So what exactly are conventions? I think I have already explained that, but this video needs an explanation, especially if it's catered to people who have never been to a con. So a convention is a big gathering of fans of any media. There are anime conventions, there are fantasy conventions, and there are all over the fandoms conventions. You know, basically a place in which you can meet Thor, Han Solo, and I don't know, Retsuko from Agretsuko in one place. These events are being organized all over the world and are basically so unhinged sometimes. There have been instances of conventions going very badly. There were organizer oopsies, there were convention goers oopsies. Basically I am going to tell you about all the drama in some later video. For now you need to know that in these events many cosplayers and other fans of media meet and have fun. There are panels, there are concerts, there are performances. It is so much fun. But also it is very overwhelming, especially for a neurodivergent person like me. You basically have to be quite open to people and also very prepared to meet a lot of people who are sweaty, loud and crazy. But that's the fun of the conventions. Most conventions happen on the weekends. In the US, there were some conventions that were happening on Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday. However, here in Poland, we mostly have conventions that happen Friday, Saturday and Sunday. Heck, there are even conventions that also include a Monday. I don't know how it's going to look like right after the vaccines are being issued and basically the first cons after the pandemic, but regular cons in the past have included sleeping at them. What I mean by that is either a big gym like in a school, if a convention was organized in school, filled with people in sleeping bags, on their mats, and basically sleeping in a giant gym. If a convention was being organized at an expo, then there was a huge, huge place in which people could slept, could sleep. My English. In the US there are a lot of cons that happen near a hotel so that the convention guests can book a room at a hotel with a discount or without it and spend their nights at a hotel but they do spend it with other people. Because I am from Poland and our cons are more unhinged than in the US, my advice is going to cater specifically to Polish people. However, if you ignore my sleeping advice, my advice can be helpful for you too if you live outside of Poland. So while we're talking about sleeping, here is the first item you need to take with you if you're going to a convention. That is a sleeping bag. You need a sleeping bag even if it's a summer convention because you are going to get cold because at night during a con the convention venues are basically unregulated when it comes to temperature. 
they are also unregulated when it comes to temperature during the whole convention so you need to keep warm or keep cold so a sleeping bag is a great isolator for that while we're at it you will also need something to sleep on either a sleeping mat or a mattress during my first conventions i have been taking just a thick thick blanket that I just put on the floor and it laid there and it was comfy because I was in a sleeping bag. You can also take a pillow or a stuffy but my advice is if you can't really stick it into your luggage you can take the sleeping bag pouch and stuff it with any clothes that you have been wearing on a train or you will be wearing the next day because you just stuff it and it acts like a pillow. I don't have any space in my luggage because I'm a cosplayer, so this is the life hack that I learned to save some space. Also, you can buy a stuffy at the convention venue and then you can sleep on it. So, okay, you're at the convention venue, you are quite comfy, you are warm, but are you really warm? My experience at conventions is that I tend to get really cold really fast. So I take layers with me. I tend to not wear pajamas. I tend to wear thermal underwear or leggings and a t-shirt in order to preserve my own temperature. And then if I'm additionally cold, I can put on a hoodie or a kigurumi in order to wrap myself in more and more layers. You can also take some sweatpants that you can also wear at the train while in transport to the convention. Basically, you want to be comfy, you want to be hot, and if you are wearing a cosplay during the whole day, you want comfort after you take it off to be your biggest priority. So yeah, you can spend the whole day in cosplay and then change into a corset, but do you really want to do that during the most crazy weekend of the season? No, you don't want to do that. Even if there is a huge after party afterwards, you want to be comfortable afterwards. So you are comfy, you're warm, you know where to sleep, you have all of these things ready. So now you need to wash your body. There is a running joke among convention goers that basically makes fun of all the people who don't wash their bodies and they stink because they sweat. You need your toiletries. Most conventions include a space in which you can wash your body, like, like a limited amount of showers. You know, if it's happening at a school, then the showers are school showers. If it's happening at a very big expo, they basically put movable showers in one spot and there is a huge queue to it. But if you're very thrifty, you can go to a local gym that includes a free first session for people who register at it. If you know anyone that books a hotel near the convention venue, then you can go and shower there, or you can find friends in the area and shower at their house. This is how you hack conventions. But anyway, you need your toiletries, which is basically a bar of soap or a shower gel. Depending on how often you wash your hair, you probably won't be needing a shampoo. However, if you wash your hair every day, then yeah, take your shampoo with you. You need deodorant because you don't want to be stinky. I think this is basic human decency, to not be stinky at the convention. So wear deodorant, wash your body, take a towel with you, and most importantly, take some shower shoes. Flip-flops, any other crocs or something, they are crucial because you don't want to get fungi. These showers are very unsanitary and when there is thousands of people at the convention, you don't want to step into the same water they did without shoes on. So yeah, whatever toiletries you need. If you need cream, get a cream. If you need face masks, get a face mask. Basically, what I'm trying to say is you don't want to ignore hygiene during a convention. Sometimes you want to take lip balm with you because annoying dry lips are a thing that might ruin the whole weekend for you. So 
take a lip balm with you. Also, if you tend to get blisters, get some band-aids or some money to buy band-aids because these can save lives and your feet because they will get sore after you walk miles and miles in order to meet with friends and go to panels. Yeah, comfortable shoes are another thing that I think everyone should get at a convention because even if you're wearing a cosplay to a competition and it needs to be very reference accurate, you are going to walk a lot. So either you get someone to carry you, get a scooter, or you have a change of shoes. For example, in my misfortune, I wore these bad boys, but I also had these bad boys. So I changed through them because I wouldn't have survived if it weren't for my change of shoes. So we covered sleeping, washing your body. So now let's go into the cosplay category. I talked about comfortable shoes. Now I will talk about the cosplay emergency kit. It looks different for every single person. I think I will make a whole video about it. But basically, a cosplay emergency kit should include something to repair every single type of binding in your costume. So if you have anything glued, if you have anything sewn, if you have anything attached with a different mechanical situation, you are going to need some type of glue preferably super glue or a very quick trying glue, some safety pins, some bobby pins for your wig, maybe a needle with matching thread. And you can get hot glue, but I don't recommend it because many conventions prohibit the use of sockets and there are only a couple of places in which you can actually plug anything. So you are going to need a glue that can be used without electricity. If you're wearing a wig that is very styled, you probably would need a hairspray and a comb because before every photo shoot you want to detangle your wig even if it's just a simple brush through because you don't want to get a tangled wig in your photos because this is just going to look dumb. You can take a batch of powder to touch you up, a lipstick in your preferred color because if you're going to eat during a convention, which I think you should, because everyone should eat once in a while, the lipstick is going to rub off, so you need some lipstick to touch you up. You can take eyeliner or some eyelash glue to touch up the eyes and a small mirror. I, I mean, you can take your phone and look into it, but it's going to be a pain in the ass. So a small mirror is going to save you. So yeah, something for your face, something for your wig, something to repair your costume pieces, and you're good to go. Prioritize comfort in your costume and don't stress too much about your costume pieces because it's going to ruin your convention. So now the most important thing, if you don't eat and if you don't drink during a convention, you're going to have a miserable time, especially if alcohol is involved. This is mainly to my off-age people here, because if you're drinking and you don't hydrate yourself with something else than beer or vodka, then how are you going to survive the whole weekend? You're going to pass out. Have at least one hot meal during the day because your stomach is going to need it. You are going to thank yourself for taking care of your body this way. And other meals can be a simple store-bought sandwich or, I don't know, cold ramen. You always want to have a snack on you because you don't want to pass out from lack of sugar or you don't want to have a rumbling stomach through your whole photo shoot. What I recommend is some nuts, some granola bars, maybe some chocolate bars if you're into it. You can get some store-bought cookies or even homemade. I spent my whole last PitCon living on store-bought pastries. So. Basically, you want to take non-perishable foods or foods that you can prepare with just hot water because some conventions do have a hot water point in which you can prepare your noodles or something like this. I have a whole video in which I reviewed noodles, so you can check it out if you want. Non-perishables, raisins, nuts, Skittles. No, Skittles are not a good idea because if sun hits it, then they're going to melt. Pretzels. Pretzel sticks. Yeah, paluszki is one of my favorite snacks at conventions. 
breadsticks that aren't going to spoil in like two days. Pastries, the same thing applies. You can get some dried fruit, dried veggies, freeze-dried anything, some nori, chips, are not an ideal option but they are good too and remember about one hot meal per day because you don't want to starve you want to nourish your body even if you're partying throughout the whole weekend same goes for water get a reusable water bottle with a filter so you can get water wherever you go also reusable straws or a hot beverage cup are ideal if you want to take coffee with you or if you want to get takeout from like Starbucks or something. My favorite is this little Stoyo cup which is collapsible so it doesn't take much space in my bag. It has a little hole and it also has a straw a silicon straw but I don't know where to put it so yeah it's a hot beverage cup with measurement lines on here so baristas and vendors can know how much they put into the cup and it also has a straw so it's good for cold and hot beverages what I also like to take for snacks is this little microwavable and washable box it's from Ikea and it has a very very strong seal so it is very leak proof if you want to be eco-friendly I also recommend getting some reusable cutlery this was a Attached to some plastic boxes we have in our home but you can take some stainless steel spoon or fork last category apart from anything you need to sleep toiletries cosplay stuff and food you are going to need documents money and medication and also electronics I forgot about that so if you're under 18 you are going to need a parents permit most conventions have a permit on their web page you can print get it signed by your parents and bring it to the convention you have to have it all the time on you in a backpack or in your wallet because if you ever do something that is prohibited or if something happens to you the convention needs a legal protection because you are there because your parents let you you aren't there illegally they need to know it so you have to have it on you all the time in your wallet you are going to need your credit card or debit card and also cash many vendors don't take card payments however it is way easier now to pay with a card especially after the pandemic because non-cash payments have been preferable but at conventions you know there are artists that don't have a card reading machine they do all their paperwork by hand so they are going to accept payments in cash only so get yourself some cash and keep it in your wallet keep your wallet on you at all times because you don't want to lose it you don't want to get it stolen I haven't had any experience with stealing at conventions but it can happen be careful apart from your regular documents like your ID you are going to need something that says what your blood type is or what medications do you take because if you faint at a convention or if someone runs into you and you break your leg they are going to need some type of medical thing to know what allergies you have or what medication you take so they don't give you something that is going to clash with it this is important actually everyone should carry this with you all the time not only people who are diabetic or something so have it in your wallet no one has to see it until something happens to you but if something happens to you then just have it on you and finally electronics in many places at conventions you can't really use sockets that are in the walls because they are either turned off or they are taped because fire safety is very important at conventions so they have designated areas with sockets however sometimes you do need to charge your phone what do you take with you a power bank it's a very good idea to have a huge power bank or even multiple ones with cables to all your electronic devices because you are going to use them so much 
You are going to use your phone to take photos with strangers, with your friends, to record things, to remember where the panels are, to contact friends who have been lost, to pay for things if you don't have a credit card and you're paying with Apple Pay or something. So you need a power bank. And also, if you're recording like I am with my camera, you are going to need spare batteries, headphones, ebook readers, anything that you personally need and that you use regularly. But yeah, your phone and a power bank should be enough. However, you have to have a charge because sometimes it is very hard to get to the area for charging specifically. And like I said, sometimes taking a kettle with you is good. It's a good idea when you don't have a kettle in your hotel or at your friend's house, but sometimes conventions prohibit the use of sockets so you can't use it, blah 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 blah. A tip I have is if you have any questions on how this specific convention works, contact any guides that are on the convention, contact authorities. I don't mean police and fo the firemen. I mean the people who are organizing the convention, the volunteers, the people who work there because they know they are supposed to know everything about the convention I will make a whole video about what to be very careful about at conventions how to behave around cosplayers and other stuff so I won't be really talking about it in this video but yeah I'm so happy that conventions will soon be finally back so I can educate you about everything you need to know before them. Thanks for watching, let me know if you liked this video, consider subscribing if you did, and giving me a like, comment, maybe a share, because it really helps with the algorithm. All of my social media are below in the description, as well as my coffee and Patreon if you want to support me financially. I also stream every Wednesday and Friday at 8pm Central Europe time on Twitch, so you can catch me out there. Ah, this episode and the series is seriously making me so so happy. So see you next time and bye!